Hello, I'm Dr. Needs Go, and welcome back to Milwaukee AZH Wound Center. I have a very interesting patient that I would like to share with you. This patient uh, is well known to us at the clinic. Uh, we've been managing a plantar ulcer in the first metatarsal head, diabetic foot ulcer. Uh, he went to the hospital, to the emergency room, about a week ago, complaining of uh, fevers and chills, and he was actually admitted for uh, septic, uh, a septic type picture. Um, the family reports that um, they were looking at the foot and monitoring the foot, um, discharged him on amoxicillin, but per the family's report and the patient's report, um, this has gotten uh, worse over the last couple of days. Actually, it was getting worse in the hospital. You'll notice that he's got pretty significant uh, swelling and erythema. This is tender uh, to the touch, but you can see there's a lot of edema here. The dorsum of the foot is also uh, erythematous and warm uh, and tender. But what I wanted to illustrate to you is the plantar findings. You can see the uh, primary ulcer here. What you'll notice is that there is a fluid-filled blister that's uh, extending uh, over the almost nearly the entire distal plantar surface. This needs to be open and debrided. Uh, the question is, this area right here certainly does uh, appear soft and mushy. Is this necrotic? Uh, is this uh, a process that obviously represents an early necrotizing infection? And you don't know until you uh, debride it. So we're gonna open this area up and see what's hiding underneath it. Hopefully this is something that can be uh, <coughs> managed without surgical intervention, but uh, unless you look, you're not going to know. They didn't look in the hospital, his prior admission, and that uh, is a little concern to me. So let's go ahead and debride this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start right here in the middle. I'm going to pinch some of that tissue and open it. And then we'll perform a debridement of the blistering tissue in a similar fashion that you've seen us do in the prior videos. I'm taking my scissors, I'm finding the margin between the epidermal blister and the healthy skin, mm -hmm. inserting the scissors, one blade of the iris scissors, and then uh, opening and debriding that blister. Yeah, I'll come to the other side and do the same thing. We have purulent drainage, obviously, coming from this area. just laden with fluid. This is, a, again, a great culture medium for bacteria. So this is probably some ischemic, some inflammatory, some infectious change that we're noting here. I've unroofed the blister approximately, and what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna just debride this gently. That's deeper dermis that you see just sort of sliding off the foot. Now I can look at this really closely and in fact uh, there's pus underneath there. I'm going to go ahead and open that in a second. Let's go ahead and explore the rest of this. Most likely cause for this is seeding of the deeper tissues from the ulcer. And you'll note the epidermal lysis extends the distal foot. Actually there's some extension into the web space. And let's take a look at that tissue a little closer. This is inflamed, but I don't feel any pus underneath this area of the foot, which is good. Once again, the bane of our existence as wound care providers taking care of diabetic foot ulcers is the development of callus. Callus builds up leads to ulceration. I'm not expecting to find anything under this area, but you never know. Mm -hmm. 
One of the concerns that you have with a foot ulcer like this, especially a septic foot, is you know how deep does this go? We can actually probe using a little metallic probe here. I'm using the pickups. You can feel it. I don't feel any bone, which is great. And uh, the patient reports that when he was in the hospital, they actually did some x-rays and told him that the bone looked okay, which is also comforting. So what you'll see we have here um, is a septic foot, clearly progressive cellulitis. My big concern right here is this area that was under the blister. What is in there? Is there pus in there? Open this up here. And what you'll see is we've got purulent drainage coming from in there. You can see that pus draining from the foot. Could you give me a culture stick, please? And again, you see that pus coming out in the purulent drainage. We're going to culture this. Many times you'll find loculations inside. We'll check for that right now. Not a lot, but again, you can see the tissue is not healthy. Most importantly, you've got pus draining from the plantar space. So whenever I do an IND of any type of wound, I want to make sure that we decompress the tissues. This is not to beat up on my emergency medicine colleagues, but what you often find in the emergency room when they do a drainage procedure, you wouldn't expect to see this done in the emergency room, but a small simple IND of an abscess uh, or a boil, a furuncle, um, is they do a stab type of incision. So they'll take the scalpel and they'll stab in and then they'll drain. That does not adequately decompress. You need to make a large enough incision and then you need to get inside that cavity and really make sure that you've broken up those loculations. And then you want to milk the tissues. Uh, you really want to decompress that, that area of abscess, milking that purulent drainage well. If you haven't done that, you've not done a good job of iodine. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this area up. We're going to pack the wound. This patient obviously will need to go back to the hospital for more antibiotics and potentially for some additional surgical debridement. So thanks again for joining us on this edition of the Wound Care Window.